So um, we have reached another sprint review. Um, we are uh, deep in the uh, quality checking of Kiwi and the bug fest work that goes along with that. So um, we don't have as many demos as we normally have today because uh, so much work is right now um, bug fixes and also prep for Lotus, but we do have a few good ones. So as far as um, the slides, I'm not gonna take you through all the dev teams. Uh, just remember that we've got lists of the dev teams and their members and what they're working on um, on the wiki. And the easiest summary place to see which team is responsible for which modules and also which product owner is responsible for which modules is in the team module responsibility matrix, the matrix that controls our lives. Um, we took out the membership uh, several um, smart reviews ago, but we do have membership on, um, on the wiki. And right now, um, we are in the process of finalizing the Juniper hotfix. Um, let me just reload this page. Um, so today we had a meeting about Foliget and we resolved a couple things that were blocking the hotfix three. Um, I think Anton's probably gonna talk more about it. So I'm gonna, uh, leave it there. There may be a small hotfix for unclear at this point, um, but uh, if there are a couple more things that need to get fixed, then we may have a very small hotfix for. But for right now, the most important message is hotfix three is not blocked and should be finished in the next day or two at the very latest. Um, as far as Kiwi, we uh, had prep and now we're in week two of Bugfest and um, Anton has more details about Bugfest when we get to Anton's section. Reminder that all of the sprint reviews are recorded and we are linking to those recordings in the whichever release we're in. So if you ever need to go back you can either go to the OLF um, YouTube channel or you can go to the appropriate page in the appropriate uh, release area on the wiki. Oops, and I'm gonna uh, mute somebody. Okay. Um, just like normal, we've got sprint highlights for uh, each of the teams. Uh, on what they've been working on in the last two sprints. And uh, I think pretty much everybody's been working on bugs and making their releases and prepping for um, Lotus. And now we get to the um, interesting part of, of the review. So as far as demos, you can see we don't have our normal uh, really long list, but we've got some quality things that folks are going to show. So without uh, any more rambling from me, I'm going to turn us over to Thunderjet and Makita and stop sharing. Um, yeah, hello everyone. Um, let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, so today I'd like to talk about uh, two things. Uh, the first one is that uh, now um, in invoices and orders uh, settings model, we support uh, shortcuts. So we can um, change our settings and press command plus S and it will be saved. And yeah, it's implemented mostly for all settings um like order templates and other configs except uh, some pages that contains vocabulary it will be done 
separately uh, for all uh, vocabularies we have across application. And uh, another thing to discuss is that we started end-to-end uh, -end tests um, for our modules. Uh, and so far we've covered only a few pages uh, and only like main screens, ledger and funds, and I'll demonstrate how it works for funds. So uh, it's my like uh, local test runner and I'll run uh, my filtering and search test uh, in front of Folio snapshot. So you can see that test uh, fields, uh, different fields, like uh, at this moment it's search and verifies that uh, matched uh, result is found. Um, I'll highlight some step. Yeah, for example, this one, like search by all and uh, found results. And uh, uh, another uh, example, like fill all our filter um, options and found results. Uh, and I think this is for my side. Thank you. I'm so jealous because uh, this is what um, Folija wants to get to. Uh, this is the exciting part and being able to see all of the, the tests that are firing and get the, the happy check marks is awesome. All right, um, next is Thunderjet 2. So Yuri. And Marie, I guess we're having technical issue for Yuri. Uh, he's working to fix his mic. So maybe we should go on with the next team and we'll be back with Yuri later. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Oh, I nope. hope you can hear me. If we got him. Is, let me know, please. Yes, Great. we can hear you. Awesome. except you may have just muted. Okay, uh, today go. I'm going to show you updates uh, that related to uh, receiving it. Let me share my screen. Okay, I hope you can see it. Uh, yes. These updates allow a user to decide whether to keep the uh, holding when uh, deleting the last piece or item in this holding or to delete it too. Uh, for example, we have four holdings in inventory and five uh, pieces in uh, receiving app and four of them are related to uh, inventory items. In case if a holding contains more than one record, either uh, piece or item, and we want to delete this uh, piece, then we will be intercepted by default confirmation model and to choose one of two options, either to confirm this operation or cancel. In case if the holding contains only one record as a piece or holding, and we want to uh, delete this piece related to the uh, last record in the holding, then we'll be intercepted by new confirmation model that says uh, that uh, there are nothing in this holding, only our record, in this case item. And we can uh, choose cancel this operation, delete only uh, this item or delete item and holding. So uh, let's uh, delete holding and item in this case. And okay, let's check what happened in inventory. So as you can see, uh, this holding were deleted and uh, this is also were deleted. In case if we, in such a situation, in case we uh, click delete item, we should uh, delete uh, only item and keep holding an inventory. Let's check it. Yeah, okay, uh, annex holding uh, zero and it's empty. The same behavior we can see if we 
try to delete a uh, piece not connected to item and it's uh, the last uh, record in holding uh, it's the same but uh, there are small difference in uh, delete buttons so let's delete it another uh, another update is also relates to the ability to delete the holding when we want to uh, edit a piece and change current holding uh, this uh, let's first delete one item. Uh, when we try to edit a piece uh, that uh, the only one uh, connected item or just a piece in in the holding, and we want to change uh, current holding, and as uh, this holding doesn't contain any uh, another elements, uh, let's sure that there are no other items uh, okay and we try to save this piece we can also choose uh as it to keep holding and uh, uh, change like uh, holding or delete uh, holding with uh, changing so i think uh, this is all for my side what this uh, purpose of this of this uh, uh, is the holding may no longer be meaningful, but user may forget to delete it, and leaving confusing record in inventory. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. Um, yes, the details of receiving and cleaning up and receiving is, is definitely a, a big piece that we've been working on with Thunderjet. All right, um, next is Firebird, um, so Vladislav. Hi, everyone. Uh, so let me can, uh, share my screen. I hope you can see it. Yes. Uh, so first of all, I uh, want to show you that we are set, uh, set up a new model, bulk edit. We created a UI, uh, <laughs> few UI things. Uh, it's two panes, some filters, drop downs. Uh, also, we created drag and drop. It's triggering, but it's not, it's not have any logic yet. And probably that's all because it's not have any business logics. And uh, uh, also, I want to show you that in that export uh, search field, now work as expected that we can, uh, the pointing when we found some things, uh, and uh, remove it if it's con considering some, yeah, as we, as we can see it. And when we delete in uh, uh, our text from search uh, field, it's showing all items. And it works uh, the same way in the field mapping profiles. So we can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably that's all uh, from my side. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Thank you, Vlad. I feel like we need to have, I don't know, bells or train whistles or something when we get a new app. So it's great to see bulk edits starting to come to life. Um, and I so, know there's a ton of work that's going on with that one. So Magda as the product owner and, and y'all working on it. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. I'm stopping sharing my screen. All right, and Slava. Yeah, okay. Hello, everyone. Now let me share my screen. Just confirm that you see my screen now. Yes. Okay, so today I would like to present one important improvement from Firebird team. Uh, this improvement uh, really important for some of our customers. Uh, who don't like to use Amazon storage, uh, temporary storage uh, for generated mark files in scope of data export flow. So uh, to understand sense of our improvement, uh, let me briefly remind how data export works. For example, a user has some uh, input file like SQL query, for example, and uh, user would like to have in uh, mark format all the records, all the available items. For this purposes, uh, he 
upload file and start data export. After that, uh, when data export uh, uh, was completed, a uh, user uh, uh, has possibility to download generated mark file. It should be noted that uh, this mark file previously st was stored only uh, in Amazon S3. Uh, as I mentioned previously, a couple of customers uh, would like to have possibility to store this file not in Amazon, but in Folio uh, remote storage. To implement this feature, uh, we introduced Minio client for data export application. Uh, for now, uh, I would like to show you how it works in my local environment because we still continue uh, configuration DevOps part of our work on Rancher and uh, I haven't uh, menu uh, console UI to show you what happens. So uh, here uh, we can configure uh, our application not only for using Amazon, but also uh, Minio. And uh, uh, here you can see uh, Minio server on my local machine. And uh, now let's try to do the same for data export with uh, integrated Minio. Okay, I'll try to export the same file with using default job profile. And uh, uh, we can see that our work done. Uh, okay, I just refresh my page. And uh, okay, we can see that we can download our mark file. Uh, actually, this is a real mark file, not some fake. Uh, just a moment. You can see it in text editor, for example. Yeah. And uh, also we can inspect uh, our Minio server. Let's refresh it. Let's go to our bucket, browse it. Uh, we can see that corresponding mark files was generated successfully and uh, now, uh, as a result of all our works for this feature, we can integrate uh, not only with Amazon, but also with any S3 compatible storage. Uh, for example, our internal folio storage based on MinIO server. That's all from backend Firebird. All right, that is awesome to see it uh, uh, becoming more flexible and accommodating more uh, storages. So Magda or any of the um, people working on bulk edit, um, there's a question in chat, what format of files is uh, gonna be expected for the, new, for the list of identifiers, the input list? Uh, right now we are talking about CSV file. Okay, so CSV. All right, any other questions about um, either bulk edit or storage? All right, thank you, Firebird. Thank you, I stopped sharing my screen. Okay, um, and next up is Falcon, so Pavel. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me present a few studies from the Falcon team, it would be searching by empty values, and the second one would be enabling or disabling tenant specific features. Let me show my screen. Let me know if you're able to see the plasma. Yes. 
the first one would be I will show the search by empty values. For example, uh, this is a snapshot environment, uh, and I will prefer. Uh, from the queries, the search by index title equals empty value, and this query will return uh, all instances that contain an index title not empty. For example, there's American Association job. Uh, the query to perform and find uh, this following query uh, will match all records from the existing index and and will find all resources that not, does not contain index title so for example there is no results containing this value also there is uh, other queries and they are all described in the uh, readme md file from the mod search github repository uh, second one would be searching by all records and uh, uh, currently a tenant can enable or disable this feature for him uh, for example now uh, this query will return empty results, but if I'll run enable this feature, there is a new endpoint search config features, and uh, this request body is enabling search by all the fields for the tenant. It's enabled, so I will need, need to run the index against the snapshot environment. It could take a little while, and uh, currently. Uh, this feature is enabled on the uh, snapshot environment and you can perform the SQL all equal to chaos and you will be able to find the result containing the chaos word. I guess that's me from my set. Thank you. So, so if yeah. you enable that, it searches everything in the record, every yeah. field. In yeah, okay. it's uh, the stories that we are presenting uh, at the previous demo, I guess. Cool. In all uh, inventory records, meaning instance holdings and items. Yes. Wow. All right, and re-indexing, I guess, takes uh, would take a little while um, on any of the big production environments, but yes. not not too long on stuff. Yes, okay. say it depends on the amount of records. Right. And this is the configuration is not something that will be happening likely. This is mostly once the environment is set up. This was only for the demonstration purposes. Right, right. All right, and Alexi. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so I want to present a small uh, feature. Uh, so uh, we uh, added a possibility to make a, a search by facets for statistical codes. And uh, this facet includes the statistical codes from uh, instance item and holding. Uh, so for now, we uh, find that uh, and see that we uh, have three different uh, statistical ports and um, we can uh, try to find um, uh, our uh, items uh, and instance that contains items with uh, one of the statistical code and uh, it is uh, our in instance so uh, we can find and see that our item contains uh, this statistical code and uh, also it works uh, for uh, instances as well so we can uh, find for another one statistical uh, code and we see that instance contains this one uh, statistical code books and uh, it works for uh, holdings as well, so we can try to find by holding statistical codes, and uh, our holding should contain the statistical code. Holding, yeah, and we have this one, and uh, yeah, I believe that's it. 
from my side. So for now, we can make search for facets uh, by statistical codes that presented in instance site on Napoleon. Oh, thank you, Alexi. Always good to hear your voice. Um, and the statistical code search, I think, is, is one of those that's really important. I know a lot of libraries are using that for categories that they want to be able to um, assign to inventory records so they can gather them up again. So really good to see it. Thank you. All right, any questions for whichever team? Falcon. All right, third of the F teams, Folajet. Um, so you have a pinch hitter for Kate Spinchenko, our um, team lead. She is uh, swamped with, with uh, some last minute fixes. So I am going to um, share my screen again. Okay, and hopefully people can see it. So um, the, the piece that I'm gonna show is that in Juniper, there were some identifier types added to the default list of identifier types and data import uh, has made some changes so that they are accounted for in the default mark bibliographic to instance mappings. So the, the new identifiers that were added um, canceled system control number was the first one uh, quite a while ago. And then more recently, um, ISMN, which is the International Standard Music Number, and the Invalid ISMN, and UPC and the Invalid UPC code. So I have two environments up. I have um, the Juniper um, hosted reference environment, and I have snapshot load. So I'm going to show the source record here for Petrushka. And in this, we have an 035 subbuild Z, um, which is not mapped as part of Juniper right now in the default mappings. So 035 subbuild Z is now mapped as canceled system control number, which I'll show you in just a minute. We also have um, numbers happening here in the 024 field. So lots of different kinds of control and identifier numbers go in 024. Um, ones that have a first indicator of two are the ISMNs and subfield A means it's valid, subfield Z means it's invalid. So right now when you look at this record on Juniper, in the identifier section you'll see that those 024 fields are just identified as other standard identifier, which is what all the 024s are identified as. And that subfield Z in the 035 is not indicated anywhere on the identifiers in the instance. If I flip over to snapshot load, um, exact same record underneath, but now, this is the 035 subfield Z showing up as canceled system control number. And then here's the 024 uh, first indicator two subfield A showing up as ISMN and subfield Z showing up as invalid ISMN. And then the other two were the UPC, uh, UPC identifiers. So here in the 024, First indicator one means I'm a UPC number. And you'll see that um, we have a subfield A for one of these that has a qualifier, subfield Q. And then we have a couple subfield Zs here for um, UPC numbers also with qualifiers. And in Juniper, they all just show as other standard identifier and we're not 
um, kind of distinguishing between all the subfields very well. In Kiwi, now we have the valid UPC showing up with its qualifier and without the price kind of jumping it up. And we have the two invalid UPCs showing with their qualifiers. So that's it for um, our updated mapping. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Masha to show a couple of updates uh, for invoices and for job profiles. Yes, hello everyone. I'm sharing my screen. Okay, do you see it? Yes. Great. Uh, so first part of the demo, I'm going to show you from the Bugfest Kiwi environment because uh, there are some issues on the hosted reference and with important files. Okay, and uh, now I'm going to demonstrate a fixed bug for acquisition units field for imported artifact files. Here I have already prepared a field mapping profile with uh, field acquisition units field, its main. And uh, an important thing that a user who uh, imports um, uh, artifact file and wants to create an invoice should be a part uh, of this acquisition unit. And let's check that this is so. So currently I'm logged in as Anne-Marie Broa. And here we are, and we assigned to this acquisition unit. So now I can go ahead and import an artifact file. Actually, I already prepared an artifact file. Here it is. One more thing I want to show you is uh, that uh, now created status for invoices uh, displayed as a whole link, so I can easily get to relevant uh, invoice line details. So here it is. And now to get to the invoice, uh, I need just to click on this uh, close icon. And here we have an invoice. And uh, you can see that acquisition units field is filled in as, with the main value. Okay, so this is for artifacts. And now I'm going to switch to uh, job profiles. So currently I'm on the data import settings page and uh, let's pretend that I want to create a job profile. And I already created a couple of action profiles. Uh, one action profile is with uh, a text field mapping profile to it. And uh, I forget to attach a field mapping profile to another one. I'm going to create a job profile and uh, I want to attach those two action profiles. First one uh, would be with attached field mapping profile and everything is okay. And the second one is uh, without attached field mapping profile. And here I get a warning model, uh, which prevents the user from attaching an empty action profile to a job profile. So that's it from me. If you have any questions, please ask. Thank you, Masha. Um, the hot links are one of the happiest things I think for us on Kiwi for Foliget from the front end, because we, we didn't have a lot of new stuff in Kiwi and uh, making it so that mm -hmm. users cannot accidentally attach action profiles that will cause their import to fail is another good fix. All right, and so I think we have come to the top bill of the day, Anton with his quality updates. Um, do you wanna share your screen, Anton? Or do you want me to share? Uh, yes, I just did. Uh, okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, okay. 
So hello everyone. Uh, I'll be a happy Anton today for a change. So, uh, so the first thing I would like to thank everyone on uh, good work, <coughs> good, uh, good work done in terms of uh, building uh, RTL JS test, Karate API test, and the end to end test. So you can see on the slide the work that was planned for Kiwi and it's practically all done. So uh, thank you everyone for uh, kind of getting this uh, uh, huge undertaking uh, from the, uh, you know, uh, from the dead spot to, to moving. So let me get to the next slide. So now I'd like also thank you all for very uh, solid effort in grooming uh, next release. I think all the teams did outstanding job in grooming uh, QA, uh, QA tasks and stories and estimating and getting them ready and scheduling, uh, scheduling them into the backlog. So on this slide, you can see the progress of all the things that were scheduled for the Lotus, Lotus release. So this is our progress for uh, Lotus release. Obviously we're just starting, so, but here it is, whatever. Uh, and by the way, you can find all these graphs in the quality dashboard uh, in the wiki. So if you just search for QA dashboard, you will find all these graphs and more over there. Uh, so now the, uh, the question is like, if we do all that, how far along are we? So this slide shows a breakdown of work that, uh, that was done in a green color. That's a, a Kiwi completion. And uh, in the maroon color is what has been planned for uh, Lotus. And then in the black color is what is not scheduled. So this is, so if we finish uh, Lotus as we planned, uh, so the black color represents what's gonna be left to do for the following, re following releases. So uh, this is kind of where we stand in terms of our completion and future planning. And the last slide I have for you is actually a very happy slide because as you can see, we are in a, uh, day seven uh, of the bug fest. So it will end in three days and we are making very good progress. We practically have everything claimed. We only have 21 test case that doesn't have an owner to be tested. So it's number is very low and I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll find people to pick it up. We, we have very uh, small percentage of failed test cases compared to total number of test cases. We only have 54 failed test cases. It's much lower number compared to all bug fests that we ran before. So that being said, all the QA work that you, I, I ask you to do and sometimes feels like, uh, why do we have to do all this? It's such a grand work. Well, I think this is the little sign that it pays off. So we have fewer bugs that are found, uh, found by, uh, uh, by volunteers. And also I'd like to mention that uh, I think it's the first time when we were able to build the system right on schedule. So Bugfest Kiwi system has been built on, uh, it was done on Wednesday, uh, the week before Bugfest start and product owners had a chance to uh, review and test module, uh, kind of do the uh, walkthrough uh, with their modules before the Bugfest start. So usually we're in the mode when we have to delay a couple of days or sometimes a week. But this time we were able to start on time and we changed the way we treat our data set. So we uh, reduced the amount of work and uncertainty just by uh, having data set um, 
snapshot that was taken before previous bug fest start. And it reduced the amount of work that we needed to do to, uh, to get this one done. So all we had to do just uh, update modules to the Kiwi versions. But we make, as you can see, we're making good progress uh, in the bug fest and hopefully bug fixing period will be not, uh, not very stressful because of number of issues that are coming in. Uh, and if that, uh, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that that will be the case. And you'll be able to focus on Lotus release more than bug fixing for key. So thank you all for your hard work. And um, this is all that I have uh, for today. Are there any questions? I just can't believe you're happy. So uh, what a good presentation to end on. Um, so delightful. Thank you very much, Anton. Thank you, guys. Um, I just back the screen share for just a minute. Um, so next up, we've got two regular size sprints uh, before we start to get uh, deep in the holidays toward the end of November. Um, we started Sprint 126 on Monday and I cannot believe we're at Sprint 126. So we've been at this for over two years now. Um, we've got the second week of Bugfest happening right now. And in 126 and 127, we'll be doing hopefully our final Kiwi releases with our bug fixes. Um, we've also got some performance testing that's planned and everybody is, is working on their uh, kind of finalizing and getting estimates together for the stories uh, for Lotus. Uh, Sprint 127, we will hopefully be doing the uh, the final bug fix releases and being able to declare Kiwi released. And uh, for teams that have not already started Lotus development, Lotus development will start. Um, one thing I forgot to put in 126, we have that last little bit of Juniper hotfix three, potentially a couple issues in a hotfix four that are happening in 126. Um, we're hoping Hotfix 3 will be official in the next day or two at the latest. Um, we, we have all of this on the Sprint calendar that's on the wiki in case anybody wants to check any of the deadlines. They're also on the um, Kiwi release page on the wiki. And as always, teams have got their plans for their coming sprints. Um, most everybody is uh, doing what I just described, but in more detail. And so this may be our shortest um, sprint review in a long time, 47 minutes. So thank you, everybody. Um, just like always, Peter will get this up on YouTube in the next day or two, and I will send out the invite for the next demo, um, which will be after um, the next two sprints, 126, 127. There's something in chat. Yay, Kalila, if Lead PO is happy and Anton's happy, then the planets have aligned. All right, any questions from anybody before we, we all get some extra time back? Oh, <laughs> yes. All right, thank you everybody. And please um, get back to work, get those bugs fixed, get them tested, and we will uh, meet again in a few weeks. Have a great day, everybody.